Hey, I'm Mike Warbaev and thanks for tuning in. Today I want to show you a breakdown of the alligator leather material made entirely in Substance Designer. This uh, video is a special one for the Substance community. They will have an interview with me on their blog pretty soon, so make sure you're not missing it. If you don't want to recreate every step I'm making in this video, you can just download the graph from my gumroad and just play around with it. If you like this video, don't forget to press a like button, share and subscribe. Let's go straight to the point and start exploring the graph. Okay, just before we start, uh, I want to note that I'm shooting this video in 4K so you can see every single detail of this graph so you can switch now in the YouTube settings. Okay, let's go. Uh, the first part is the initial pattern generation. This is the part of the graph where I'm trying to create using the simple primitive shapes something that resembles alligator leather. Uh, and I'm using here free tile samplers, the first one for the uh, large central scales. I'm using as a pattern input here the shape and transformation 2D nodes, just because it gives me more control over the shape than uh, just selecting here square input uh, or something like that. The next thing I'm doing gradient linear and I'm connecting this uh, to the scale map input to get this variation in scale from the central part to the sides. Uh, also I'm doing a levels to shift a range of this gradient a bit and use it as a displacement map input. Let me show you. If I use something higher than the value here, let's say 0.3 you can see how it bends, but that's too extreme, so I choose to use something something really small here, okay? Uh, the next thing, basically, I'm creating from this gradient some masks for the middle scales and for the smaller scales. And basically, the tile samplers is a disk pattern with some uh, random in offsets so we get a bit chaotic uh, distribution of these disks and later on I'm just blending all this together to get this kind of map. It really far from <laughs> the something natural, something like alligator skin but uh, we will deal with that. The next part of my graph is the warp plus the blend plus warp variation. What I'm actually trying to do here is I'm doing a non-uniform directional warp uh, where intensity and warp inputs are the this gradient linear. And what I'm get using this is a bit of a bend more. I make it more pronounced. And the next thing, I'm doing um, several directional warps with the, again, with the, some gradient max for the sides. Like I'm compressing it, I'm like I'm moving the middle scales to the center a bit. You can see this. See, I'm compressing a bit the middle parts of the scales to create uh, a variation, a more variation, more natural look, looking scales. And the next thing, if you check on some references like this, you will see that we have a, a band here, like you can see on these horizontal lines, like we have band, but in, in the center, right in the center, we have a bit of a distortion effect. So I'm just trying to just trying to make that effect by uh, creating a gradient linear again, 90 degrees, rotation, histogram scan to get a tiny middle gradient stripe and I'm doing directional warps. See, I'm just trying to recreate this effect to, to bend a bit, like just like this, you see? 
Okay, so the next thing I'm doing uh, again, I'm doing some warps. Uh, really slightly. And now, if you check the initial map we had, really uniformly uh, distributed, really artificial looking, and we're starting to get something natural, something something lifelike looking. <laughs> Uh, so the next part uh, called little scales shape variation is a small part when I'm just using a tile sampler uh, where the color map input is the, actually another tile sampler with the small size scales and I'm try, trying to distribute the small disks and dots something where the small scales resides and I'm doing a blend with blending mode uh, at linear dodge uh, and what I'm trying to achieve is to just add a bit of uh, variation a bit of uh, small scales on the side to break this uh, distribution pattern to a bit so you can see it really slightly See, so the next part of the graph, and I think it's the one of the most important parts uh, that I call distance growth and edge detection. So what I'm doing here, I'm taking the result we had, doing a flood fill, doing a flood fill to random grayscale, and doing distance note of, over it with a really uh, large uh, maximum distance so you can see like we had a pattern and we grow in it uh, like the War Voronoi map so we can so we get something more natural looking like the Voronoi map but with our addition with this uh, rectangular scales which is warped and bended like like the something that we can see on the reference see so we, the next thing we're doing is edge detect and actually i'm doing the same thing twice and uh, because sometimes when you're doing the edge detect you can see some cells uh, blended together detected together like glued together and it results in to something weird shape and something very unnatural and I just want to make sure that every cell is isolated uh, from the other and that's why I'm doing uh, flood fill twice with a different random seed so you can see uh, on one edge detect we had this uh, merged together on another it's separated and when they blend it together uh, through the multiply we have a uh, nice uh, edge pattern where every cell is isolated the next thing I'm doing is uh, the several edge detects what I'm actually trying to create here is the roundness of the scales and the distance between them but I don't want to do this uniformly I want to add some more variation and that's why I'm doing free edge detects with different uh, edge roundness and but the same edge width uh, and then at the next step I want to blend this edge detects uh, to make side scales the smaller ones uh, more round than the central ones so for this I'm taking again this result that we get after edge detection doing a flood fill and then I'm doing a flood fill to grayscale when on the grayscale input I'm taking the same old mask we used in the beginning when uh, creating when we created uh, the small uh, scales so I'm taking the same mask and I'm doing a flat fall to grayscale and this allows me to select the small uh, scales on the sides the same thing I'm doing with 
the middle ones, but this part is a bit tricky it's just because if I take this, uh, like, let's check it. If I take uh, the mask we use for the middle scales, middle sized scales, and take this here, doing a flood fill to grayscale, you see, it uh, it selects uh, these scales very unnatural, very uh, uh, with something like a repetition, something artificial looking. So I'm not doing this, I'm just taking the uh, tile sampler medium side scales, I'm doing some blur, I'm doing some histogram scan to uh, merge a bit and I'm using this as uh, a grayscale input for a flood fill and you see we get much more natural selection uh, and we use this mask on blending different edge detects so you see we have here more roundness in there and we have uh, more distance like it was uniformly uniformly uh, uniform look and after blend we get more variation and another blend we have even more variation and if we check if we hit the space button uh, you can see we can we're starting to get something natural looking something like the reptile scales so uh, the next uh, part of my graph called scales distance tweak w what I'm trying to do here actually I think it's not enough uh, variation in the distance between the scales uh, after edge detect so I want more control over it I want to do something uh, customized so I'm doing a blur of this input and I'm doing a histogram scan. It gives me rounder edges and a bit of more distance. But the next part I'm creating gradient linear free, doing a transformation 2D to scale it a bit from the sides. I'm doing histogram scan uh, to make a central part wider and doing an invert grayscale. What I'm actually trying to do, this is, I want this non-uniform, uniform blur grayscale to affect only a small scales from the sides. That's why I'm creating this mask. So I, after a histogram scan, I'm getting even more roundness for, for the smaller scales. And the next part is a bit tricky, but what I'm actually trying to create is that the distance between rows should be uh, larger than distance between columns. So that these horizontal lines should be wider than these vertical lines. And I'm just trying to create this. And this is the place where we need our exposed parameter crocker rows. So, I am again using transformation 2D. I am creating the stripe, the gradient stripe I want. I do a tile sampler and in Y amount I am using this crocker rows exposed parameter. And I get 12 stripes. And another thing I'm doing here is the global offset. Uh, so I'm doing a blend with the gradient to uh, make this uh, make sides darker. Um, I'm doing directional warp to bend it a bit. I'm doing another couple of warps. The actually the same ones we did uh, here on the warp variation. I want this pattern to match the gaps we have here. So horizontal gaps wider than vertical gaps and I'm doing a non-uniform blur with the blur map uh, we just created uh, doing a histogram scan and you see we that's what I'm talking about that's effect where the uh, horizontal line uh, lines are wider than the vertical ones uh, just like here 
So we at the end of the stage we just uh, made from this uniform map we drifted away to something more natural looking. I think you agree with me that this looks much better, much natural, but we just started. So let's move to the next part called warp variation. What I'm just trying to do is just several the sequence of warps. I'm taking a purlin noise and uh, use it as intensity and warp angle inputs on non-uniform directional warp grayscale. This is a new node uh, from the spring uh, 2019 update and I'm using the 2019.1 version of Substance Designer. If you use an older version, you can find multi-directional warp on YouTube, I believe, uh, and uh, recreate something similar. And you, and you probably use it a lot. So, what I'm trying to do is just add a bit more variation and drift away from something like or something artificial, something like tiles, uh, very evenly placed uh, to something more bended, more natural, more stretched. And uh, I'm creating another Perlin noise with uh, m with much much more scaled version than this. It was the seven scale and this is 32 so I'm doing the slow blur uh, you see I'm just blurring I'm just cutting uh, for uh, cutting some some shapes from the uh, scales to do a histogram scan and it really adds distortion to the edges some more variation to this like you see really different really more natural result. Uh, the next thing I'm doing again, a blur and doing histogram scan to make it more round. And I'm creating moisture noise, blur it a bit, just a tiny bit to remove these uh, really small details. And I'm doing multi-directional multi warp grayscale uh, to create this uh, jagged, this distorted edges to push it more, see? And I create an also crystal, uh, doing a blur, and then again, non-uniform directional warp to create even more distortion, like you see, to get m much natural result if you compare with the previous map we had it much more stretch much more lifelike and now we have a black and white uh, map where the scales should be and we need to create a bit of a volume for this for the height map for the normal map and uh, let me show you like, uh, a bit uh, by the way, I'm using uh, the OpenGL normal, so the direct X normal turn to false. I'm using tessellation factor to the max and scale to the one. So we get into the next part called basic scales volume. Okay, so let me calculate this stuff. Okay. So we started from our our mask and we're doing a non-uniform blur grayscale to create a bit of soft volume for this. If I take this outputs of height normal and I connect the this uh, non-uniform blur result, you will see how how soft this volume is. Like just like a pillows, but you see these uh, strange, weird, jagged lines on the edges. So the next thing I'm doing here, uh, I'm doing another non-uniform blur. But uh, here I used intensity five, and here 
uh, I turned it to something smaller, like 0 0.7. And if you connect this non-uniform blur with the smaller value, you will see that it uh, gives us something more plain, more flat. Another thing I'm doing is I'm getting this non-uniform blur and I'm doing again a non-uniform blur with uh, 0 0.9 value and I'm using as the previous previous uh, blur as both inputs to the new one. What I'm, why I'm doing this is to create more more soft result to make the edges softer. And the next thing I'm doing here is the levels where I'm uh, just equalizing a bit, turn white to make it more flat. And the next thing I'm taking this second non-uniform blur and doing a blur grayscale a bit, see? And I'm using this as the blur map on the second non-uniform blur here. What, what it gives me, it just pushes away from these uh, jagged, strange edges and creating softer result. Yeah, so if you want to compare, you see that much more pleasant looking stuff. <laughs> And the next thing, uh, I'm doing invert grayscale. Uh, so I basically what I'm trying to achieve is that, okay, if you check something like this, is that on each scale, the curvature in the center, the surface curvature in the center of the scale, uh, pointing downwards a bit, so the edges uh, lifted higher like if you know what I mean that's what I'm trying to achieve uh, I'm inverting it so so it looks like carved from this rounded cube and I'm doing levels to push the black uh, blacks to the edges so it looks like this okay uh, and the next thing I'm doing, I'm multiply, uh, where as a background I use this result we had, and as the foreground, this uh, result after levels. And what I get is actually what, I, what I'm talking about, is actually what I wanted to achieve, so the edges point, uh, edges lifted higher where the central parts pointing downwards uh, and I wanted I really aiming for that curvature for that surface uh, so you see it's starting to starting to get shapes something like the leather actually uh, getting better but we have a problem here after the blur you see it affects uh, the central and the medium scales are much wider than the the smaller ones and after that we get this almost flat but uh, the smaller scales are way too pronounced and what I'm doing here the is it is the same concept as with this uh, edge detect blends so I'm creating another non-uniform blurs, like the backup of this, like the copy, uh, with uh, with uh, smaller intensity values. Okay, smaller, really smaller. Doing the same inverts, doing the same levels, doing all the same stuff, and doing the same blend, uh, doing some levels to to make it brighter and I'm doing the blend where I take a opacity map from the same stuff I, I took the small ones I, I make I made a flood fill from our black and white mask we get on the earlier stages I get this uh, 
mask out of edge detects. Remember, we created, and I'm doing a flood fill to grayscale again. I'm doing blur, and I'm doing histogram scan to get the to select uh, this smaller scales. I'm just I just want to select and just want to mask it out like that. And I'm using this as the opacity mask for the blend, where I'm using copy and some opacity tweaks. So we equalized uh, lightning, equalized uh, values across this height map. You see, it was really bright, but we equalized it and we, we get some variation as well. And that's so cool. Like. If you check this, look at this. I will plug this in, and you see it. It looks much more evenly uh, when I use it as a height map. It looks just better. So what I'm doing, equalizing the volume, as I commented here. <laughs> so what I'm doing next. I'm just taking the same old mask, black and white, which is created. That's why this this part was so important. We created the base uh, and we're doing so much out of this base at the later stages. So we're just taking the same old mask, doing a flood fill, doing a flood fill to gradient with angle variation to one to get really a variety pattern doing a blur a slightly blur and doing, and doing a blend where I'm multiplying the the map we had I'm doing all the levels and I'm multiplying it with this map so you can see we had this result and we get much more variation. Some of the scales, uh, points downwards, upwards, it really bends the light. It creates something, uh, something interesting to to explore, to discover, to look at. You can see this difference. Even check this out. If I plug this, it looks so so unnatural, so evenly. If the light just pass this as uh, something flat. If we plug this, you can see we have variations. Something points higher, something uh, looks more flat. Uh, the light is bending. And if, uh, in, if we plug this result as a height and normal map, you'll see this, the light not bends at all. It looks so flat. So it is very cool to always add these little details to the height map and normal map as well. So uh, the next thing I'm doing, I'm creating these humps. Uh, as I commented here, the, I'm trying to bend upper parts of the scales. If you check some references, not this one, but... Um, I don't know if I had a good one for this. Look at this. Uh, when the upper parts of the the scales like bend it, like it pointing upwards. So let's try to achieve that effect. And we again doing flood filter uh, gradient. We have 90 degrees. So we need to select this upper areas of the scales. We did a histogram scan, then a blur, and to uh, add some variation to bend this not that evenly, I'm doing a clouds free and doing multi directional warp grayscale a bit with uh, intensity 5 to distort it a bit. And I do again a blur, and I just add this linear dodge to the previous result we had. So if you compare this, I will plug this in 
to the normal you can see we get this I love this result you, you, we can get this really interesting effect where they, we bend in the up the scales in uh, upper areas like this looks so cool right the next thing we're doing is uh, we just plug our map to the levels to calm it a bit and, do, and doing a blend with Perlin noise with add sub right there to get to really uh, bend it and uh, variate it uh, much more uh, I, I, I just <laughs> I'm even not sure this result is good good enough let's check yeah you can see this bumps it looks much more natural much more like the leather the actual leather if you compare it looks much more interesting but uh, anyway i think this kind of hardcore value but i'll leave it like that at the moment so we finished with basic scales volume uh, at the end of this uh, frame we have this result and it's very cool point to start with also what i'm trying to do this i'm creating a frame called scales mask it's basically the same stuff from here just for convenience it's used a lot across the graph and i about this we will talk later about this and about this too <laughs> So the next part is scales, upper wrinkles. <laughs> uh, what I'm trying to do this is, uh, let me check, let me calculate this stuff. Okay. So uh, what I'm trying to create here is, you can see this on the upper and lower parts of the scales. You can see these wrinkles, these stripes, uh, and I'm just basically trying to create the same thing. So I'm doing an edge detect on this scales mask we had to create uh, something around the edges, like a mask around the edges. I'm doing a blur out of it and I'm just using it later when I just create uh, using grunge map uh, the second one blur it uh, doing directional warp uh, and as an intensity input I'm using the same map we just created the volume and blur it a bit just really slightly really slightly so what I'm trying to do is I want this grunge map to conform the volume we created to uh, to look more like it uh, wrinkle around the scale. So the next thing I'm again blurring it a bit, and I'm doing a blend where I use this as an opacity mask, the stuff we created from from uh, edge detect and I just get this kind of map we will use this later on oh, just remember the edge wrinkles I call it so the next thing I'm doing here oh <laughs> it's tricky uh, the blur grayscale and the volume we created I'm doing I'm creating a crystals it's like something like creases uh, and I'm doing directional warp again for the purposes I described earlier and I do clouds blur it a bit and then multi-directional grayscale warp to distort it a bit as well so we basically creating this like uh, creases of wrinkles or something like that and the next thing I'm uh, what I'm doing here I'm doing here a levels where I'm just pushing the contrast and I'm using this as an opacity mask where I'm doing the blend with the volume we just created the, this uh, creases and I'm doing a 
an overlay. See, uh, on the higher area areas, I uh, I get more wrinkles. Uh, you just if I plug this in here, the, our our basic volume, and after this after this blend, we get nice result. See these wrinkles uh, in in the parts we wanted on the higher, on the upper parts and the lower parts, and somewhere in between as well. J just like something here. See, okay. What I'm trying to do next, as you can see, as this and on this reference as well on the many other ones. Here, some hard and straight wrinkled parts of the scales, and I'm basically trying to recreate this. I'm doing again anisotropic noise, like a lot of stripes with a big Y amount. I'm doing the safe, safe transform to rotate it, rotate it by 90 degrees. I'm doing a clouds free, blur it a bit, do a non uniform directional warp to make something less straight, and do a non uniform blur with a grayscale and blur map uh, the same from this non uniform directional warp. And what I get here, you can see, I will demonstrate it now. If I plug this, oh, sorry. If I plug this, you can see it. It's very hard. It uh, hard edges. You you can barely see these creases. And after the non-uniform blur with really slightly uh, with really small intensity value, uh, you can check. It looks much better. And uh, after some blur, and some blend with the black and white spots. I'm doing even more natural result. You see? Okay, and the next thing, uh, I want this stuff to be on the top upper parts and lower parts of the scales. So I need a mask for it too. Uh, and I'm creating the flood fill out of the scales mask we had, like, you know, already. And I'm doing a flood filter gradient, uh, 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees. And I'm doing a histogram scans, the same. And I'm doing a blend, add linear dodge mode uh, to get this kind of mask. I blur it a bit. And I use this on blending the our our volume with wrinkles, I use this uh, mask as an opacity mask, and I use this uh, hard uh, straight creases as the foreground, and I'm doing a linear dodge with the quarter of the opacity. So if you check our previous result, and I plug this now, and you can see the same, really, really slightly, but you can see this. Okay, again, undo this and plug this in. You see this, it's nice, so nice. I really like the result. And we move on to the next part. What I'm trying to do this, I'm inverting this uh, map we created just, just now. I'm doing a non-uniform blur. I'm inverting this to uh, get something uh, like the glow, like the uh, like the b more uh, like pushing this into the uh, space between the scales. Uh, what I'm doing next is I'm just max lighting this. Like the results. Why I'm doing this, you can barely see the difference, but if we plug this in, you can see it smoothes, it makes this parts smoother. 
like really hard edges and now it's just smooth like you see and, <clears throat> and it looks nice so we've finished the part called scales upper wrinkles and the next thing we do we we now have the scales volume and it's cool but what about this space between them There's something with we need something as a basic leather with uh, wrinkles a, a lot of stuff going on behind um, so uh, the next part called basic wrinkles volume so in this part let me calculate it okay in this part what I'm trying to do I will show you a bit of ahead of time okay what I'm trying to do is this wrinkles between the scales so let's check how it works how it done I'm creating crystal 2 I'm doing a safe transform grayscale uh, rotated by 90 degrees I'm doing a purling noise with uh, scale 6 I'm doing directional warp to make more waves of this I'm doing and hardcore edge detect it looks so messy now but it's just me need I'm blurring it a bit I'm doing a levels and I'm doing a bit of a slow blur I'm using the same uh, input for the both the same input for the both uh, both uh, grayscale and slope to get some kind of like marble effect or the wrinkles I, I don't know if we plug this in see we have like smooth leather effect like something artificial leather you can use this to create something from it <laughs> and if we plug this slow blur see we have more wrinkled more wrinkled leather more, more more natural looking leather and it already looks good uh, the next thing I'm doing all the levels I'm doing the levels to uh, fix it a bit and another thing I'm uh, blurring a bit the scale mask we used a lot I'm inverting it and I'm doing non-uniform blur grayscale to get this kind of uh, shadow or or something from these scales and I use this as uh, input intensity input and warp angle input on non-uniform directional warp and I want this uh, wrinkles in between of these scales to conform this like 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 I don't know like waves or something around the stones like if you know what I mean I, I, and I like this effect so if you check this see what I'm talking about like it it wrinkles heavily between the scales so the next thing oh sorry <laughs> sorry Oh, 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 what's going on? Yep, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, the next thing, I'm blurring this stuff. Really quite a bit. I, I can barely see it's something going on here. And I'm doing the levels to make this like a small wrinkle. Not, not so hard looking. Uh, what I'm doing <laughs> what I'm doing next I'm doing a high pass grayscale I'm doing some more contrast to this I'm adding more contrast to this and I'm doing an overlay to push the details out of this map as you can see it really pushes it so the next thing here <laughs> 
what I'm doing here. I'm doing here crystal two again, just like in this part. I'm doing it save transform by 90 degrees and by 45 degrees. I'm doing a fine edge detect. This is the node you can find on Substance Share for free to get this kind of looks like fiber or scratches or something uh, and I'm doing a blend with add linear dodge to get best of both of it like that I'm doing a blur and I'm doing levels again and what I'm doing here I'm adding adding to this uh, map created this this wrinkles so you can so you can see this I will plug plug it right into the high the normal map so you can see it really looks much better so the next thing I'm doing I don't need this information uh, right where the scales are located so I'm doing non-uniform blur to equalize this parts and uh, of course obviously I use as a blur mask the same blurred scale scales mask we used a lot today um, and it gives me just what I need where you can see only in between the scales you can see these wrinkles this leather looks so great and uh, a really slight bumps uh, in these places where scales should be located. Okay, the next thing I'm doing, whoa, I'm doing levels to make to push it a bit. I'm uh, doing again a blend. So what I'm trying to achieve here, like we had this result. I'm doing a blend with the opacity mask again, the scale mask. Um, basically, I want here to push uh, these scales a bit deeper in the material, if you know what I mean. I want this be uh, like a bit higher than the base of the scales. Uh, I will explain that stuff here where I'm just uh, another uh, another part, important part of the graph where I'm uh, just blending height map and combining scales with uh, the uh, wrinkles and leather in between. So I'm using here what I'm doing. I'm taking this uh, map creating and I'm taking this scales uh, we had earlier in the scales upper wrinkles uh, frame and I'm doing add linear dodge on this with opacity turn to one and what we get see we get that result we wanted like uh, creases uh, wrinkles in between of the scales just what we need Great. See? Okay, it already looks good, but it, it, it's a lot to be done. So the next thing we... Here is the blend for the scales and base leather blend. Okay. And the next thing I want to show is part of the graph called scales little details. So let's take this guys here. Uh, I'm using a tile sampler here with really, really small dots. The, the squares actually, but they're so small. I'm doing a flood fill. I'm doing a flood fill to random grayscale. I'm doing a distance uh, to get... Basically, you can use cells for these purposes as well, I think. <laughs> but I, I decided to do it this way, okay? Uh, and I'm doing the edge detect and I'm doing a bevel but you know you, you this distance the corner type round smoothing like uh, 
zero point five almost, and uh, this and uh, negative distance. So if you check how it looks, level, you'll see this a bit a bit of a bump, a bit of like really artificial uh, car leather or something. Uh, and I do an auto levels to push this harder, much harder. And I'm doing a slow blur to mm, push this from the sides to the edge edges. So you can see it now. It looks more, more like like leather, like something, but still far away. I'm doing a, again auto levels to make sure I'm uh, using the whole range of this spectrum. Uh, I'm doing a slow blur with fractal sound. Uh, and I'm doing again levels to make this a bit darker. As you can see. Okay, but we just started with this. So the next thing I'm doing, I'm taking again this scales mask we had. I'm doing non-uniform blur here. Then a blur grayscale, and I use this as uh, both intensity and warp angle inputs on non-uniform directional warp. Uh, to and I just want to to a bit vary it, a bit push this, a bit swirl around the scales for more natural result, and you will see soon how it works. If I plug this in, it gives me now uh, a bit weird, something really weird. But what I'm doing next, I'm doing clouds, histogram scan, and I'm just doing an add sub to add some variation to this stuff. Uh, also, I'm doing uh, moisture noise, and I'm doing again uh, some multi-directional warp grayscale to distort it a bit and you know the result is very hardcore so we're doing levels that and really push this to the dark so we have a really 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 slightly wrinkled slightly disturbed surface. You can barely see it, but if you come closer, you can see this. And this is the, some of the details that, details that interesting for exploring when you're staying away from the texture, like it looks something like, something like alligator leather, but when you come closer, you can see all these details and it, that's what makes a texture special. Like you want to, you want to discover more if you want. So now I'm taking these guys again away from here. Um, and here, what I'm doing is I'm doing another blend uh, called Scales Details Blend. I want these details to be only in the places where the scales is I don't want to affect this uh, black areas areas and after this blend you can see I add linear dodge mode after this blend I will plug this in so let's check this here without and with a lot of details, like another level of details. And that looks so cool. It was so flat and now it you you see that it uh starting to look like a leather actually. <laughs> Something more realistic. So that the remember this uh map we left behind. Now we're using this uh, in the blend called wrinkles plus volume. And what I mean here, I'm doing subtract 
with with a 0 0.2 opacity see how it it really dramatically affects the this height map um, but let's check how it looks right and where we when we boolean it we really add volume on the edges and we we smoothen this like again like some hard dull edges and with this blend it looks really great remember we just uh, wanted to affect the areas around the edges and we just achieved what we wanted it, look, it looks so cool another part called little spots damage uh, we create in Gaussian spots one do a histogram scan to select just several of them doing some directional warp just just for fun <laughs> with the clouds do some non-uniform blur and i i just think i need to show this okay so you see we have this strange dots just like a spikes right and when we do a non-uniform blur we we get something really smoother and if we do another blur it looks something like like the spots and what we try to do it's obviously we will subtract this from the map we had to get this kind of damage here see okay let me let me check yeah okay let's move forward to something uh -huh. I call this creases and another very important part of the graph what I'm doing here uh, let let me show you the result you see I'm taking the fur too I'm taking a purling noise and I'm doing a non-uniform directional warp again with uh, some with these parameters. If you, if by the way, if you missed some of the parameters, you can just download the graph from my Gumroad, and you will see everything just as it is. So you can play around. You can click on every node to check the parameters. So why not? Why not to do this? Uh, okay, non uniform directional warp this way and I'm doing another directional warp with the clouds to disturb it a bit more I'm doing another directional warp uh, with this just with this height map um, I'm so lazy to make something else but it uh, shifts a bit where the scales are placed so I'm doing a blur, a slightly blur this stuff um, also what I'm doing here, I'm creating crystals, doing blur doing levels, uh, doing histogram scan to uh, get this random areas with where the crisis will be placed and I'm doing a blend with a passive mask and the the fur distorted for we had to get this kind of map why i am using the blend node like that without a back background and just opacity it's just for the demonstration purposes so this uh, i of course i can use this uh, opacity map on blending the stuff here somewhere right but i just want this uh, frame to be like one module like one piece with the the result that you can you can see and to make this just easy to understand okay uh, what i'm doing here is just subtracting this white parts from the map we just had 
and let, let me find this you you almost can't see this but if we plug this if we plug this map just like it was before the crisis blend and after you can see it, it's a very slightly wrinkled ones so again like here we get it okay another very very tiny details very s small variation we had a small variation to this height map and normal map i'm doing a high pass grayscale with the medium radius and i'm doing just an overlay to to push the details more like if you check after the high pass and just sharper and just hotter okay another thing i'm doing is is the stuff called edge creases i'm doing another edge detect the same method we already used i'm doing invert grayscale blur uh, histogram scan to push this a bit i'm using cells and i'm doing a blend with blend and mod multiply and opacity almost 100% opacity what it creates let's check we had this height map and after the frame called edge crisis it becomes more more distorted on the edges more it gives more details more even more volume more more damage to these parts and it looks even better so the next thing i'm doing is auto levels and i'm slightly blurring the height map so you, you can see we i will stretch this you can see we have a really hard hard creases here after the blur after the blur we'll deal with that so it much more smoother the next thing uh, i want to do i want to create a roughness map before i'm doing a color the base color so i'm i'm just leaving this outputs alone i need it to height map to normal map and by the way i'm doing open gel normal with intensity one because i really don't need much uh, volume much uh, details on this it just looks we we will add more for the stylized version but for this one it's just okay like that okay we continue with a roughness map so what i'm doing here i'm taking the well-known scales mask doing a blur doing invert doing histogram scan doing blur again again some levels and i'm using this as a mask for this blend but what's going on here i'm taking our Whoa, 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 what is that? I'm just taking our basic scales volume, doing some levels, and I'm starting, starting with a roughness from the uniform color as usual, and I recommend you to do the same. So I'm blending through linear dodge with the uniform color and this base volume and what i'm doing next is i'm taking this normal with intensity equals two uh curvature uh, creating curvature supple mod not uh, creating curvature smooth not uh, and what i'm doing i'm inverting this so i don't want this uh wrinkles to be glossy as well as this I'm doing auto levels 
and the next thing and I'm blended at linear dot using this as a mask using this as the foreground and after the blend I get this kind of roughness so if if we just check how it looks I will remove the uniform color from here take this down here and plug this in you'll see that we starting to get uh, less uh, glossiness less reflectiveness on the uh, space in between the scales and more uh, reflectiveness on the scales itself and the next thing I'm doing is blending with curvature sobel at linear dot to uh, to make this uh, damage points and st stuff and wrinkles more rough so if you check this place really see how it looks right it adds and these details pops in the reflect uh, in the roughness map the next same thing I'm doing um, is I'm taking remember uh, let me track this down remember this stuff I told you we come back to uh, I, I'm just taking the I'm just doing again like where we created volume I'm doing the same non-uniform blurs I'm combining uh, them with the same mask to uh, get this result okay uh, and what I'm doing here, I'm blending, I'm multiplying uh, this uh, non-uniform blurred result by the flood fill random uh, colors to get this variation. And I'm mm, supplying this mask to this uh, blur grayscale mod, uh, not and uh, blend it with a subtract over the roughness map I created to get this variation in roughness so you can actually see what it doing oh yeah here it is see you, you it really bends the light it, it looks like this something natural something uneven something some of the scales uh, glossier than other and that looks so good what I'm doing next I'm taking this uh, details we created remember and I'm doing again a subtract to make them glossy to make them less rough so if you check this you'll see that so I, I'd like to have total control over it so I can push some details more on the roughness map and hide some others and what I'm doing next blend uh, with the creases remember we had I've just taken this map and I'm doing another add linear dot I want this uh, creased parts to be less reflective just a tiny bit and the next thing I'm just uh, just adding some clouds to this for more variation in roughness and that's it that's quite simple but you can obviously explore more and create some better results but I think that's enough for now and I just like how it looks don't want to overdo this okay so we leave this guy alone Actually, let's uh, quickly create the ambient occlusion from the height map uh, with a bit of depth and uh, maximizing the radius uh, at maximum samples. I'm doing levels a bit on it and I'm blending this with curvature sobel again. I'm doing an add sub. So you can see I'm trying to add uh, some details on this ambient occlusion map, right? And this is it. 
So we move into the last part. I taking the mask. Are doing a histogram scan, inverting it. Uh, Why I'm doing this? What I'm doing next, actually, I'm taking the height map. I'm doing several gradient map nodes. I'm just samples data from the actual alligator leather scan. I have this uh, from the Arrowway leather pack of textures, uh, as far as I remember. Uh, but it's always cool to have scanned data because uh, the lightened information, the some colors from environment are usually removed from this kind of texture if they ac if they scanned accur accurately, and you can use these colors as it is. Uh, not uh, if you, you obviously take this from this kind of image. It, has a lot of uh, information from lightning, from the reflection, a, a lot of uh, not needed stuff. It, and it's hard to get the actual color of this uh, thing. So what I'm doing here, why I need this mask, I just want like this uh, reference i just want the scales to be darker than the uh, space in between so i'm doing a couple of gradient map see and i'm just blending to get this result okay it looks nice already but uh, let's see how we can push this i'm doing again a normal with the intensity 2 i'm doing curvature smooth and sobble here but before we come to this part, I, another thing I need to mention is I'm doing a histogram scan out of the height map to get this uh, to get this uh, higher height areas. Uh, I'm doing a gradient map on this and I'm subtracting uh, this map from the our previous color map to make this uh, part even darker just like on some references uh, I had see the same thing I wanted to achieve so uh, let's go to the curvatures I'm actually doing a blend uh, I'm using again the mask I don't want to affect the something beside the scales so I'm doing a blend at sub with the curvature sobel and I'm just just really add in the details but really slightly you barely can see the difference from the distance but here they here it is some details <laughs> and the next thing I do the same thing but for the uh, leather in between of the scales I'm doing it with much smaller intensity I don't want to mm, this wrinkles to be over pronounced so another thing I'm doing I think is good stuff to help a bit this um, color information to add a bit of volume in it so I'm doing a blend with curvature actually an overlay with curvature smooth to get a bit of volume in the texture like like this and the next thing remember this uh, map we used in roughness I'm doing the same add sub stuff to add variation again like I'm pushing the space see when I blend in it you get a lot of variation like some of the scales darker some lighter etc and another cost thing we get something like gradient like it's uh, lighter in the center and darker on the corners and that that looks really great so um, another thing another thing and just uh, add in the creases, subtracting it to make them darker. Okay, I'm doing the HSL where I'm pushing 
lightness a bit and pushing down saturation just a bit. Why I'm doing this is actually I'm taking the, let me track it, I'm taking this uh, result from the from the non-uniform blur we had some time ago. I'm using this in histogram scan to get this areas and I'm using this as an opacity mask when blending these two notes, the original one and the one af after the HSL note. So I'm actually pushing this color variation more, like you can see it. Okay. <laughs> uh, the next thing I'm doing, I'm subtracting again these details we created. We created to add more variation. It affects really slightly the map we created. And the last part of the base color creation is the HSL when I decided to make it more uh, yellowish like the scan I had but not that yellow uh, and I pushed saturation down a bit and I made this texture lighter and if we add this stuff we plug this stuff to the base color we get this nice result okay look at this but and I think this this is all I wanted to show you uh, and, uh, you probably saw in the preview in the beginning of the video I showed a stylized version of this of this uh, material so let's check this out it calculates it's rendering okay here it is the difference is that I'm using normal on 1.8 so I'll push the details a bit and I'm doing just a different way of color color of gradient maps with the green um, almost alien colors and finally I get this kind of a result like you see it with a very pronounced wrinkles a bit of stylized uh, like something something more like alien or something looking okay and at the end of the video I want to show you how I rendered this uh, textures in mama set tool bag okay as you can see I'm using the speedy viewport mode to render it faster I'm using sky lighten the default one uh, I'm using default uh, sphere, sphere lover mesh. I'm using skylights. A lot, I'm creating a couple Unreal, Unreal Four templates, uh, where I loaded my textures. Okay, so here they are. It just looks great. If I disable this stuff, look at this. It's lagging a bit, but it looks just great. I think that's just the result I wanted to get. So for the demo, I did some animation, rotating the stuff. I, I don't think that tessellation is actually needed for this kind of texture. If you disable the tessellation, there's actually not much difference. I think you agree, right? So just with the normal map, we get already a cool result that can be used in games and product design and then interiors, maybe something else. Another great thing is that it scales just just great just great you can see obvious uh, repetitions of the texture right 
that's just look nice and this talent good as well so this is it you know substance designer is a well-known tool among the game artists texture artists but if you're a product designer give it a try as well uh, you know you can uh, sketch some organic textures some hot surface stuff like uh, grills vans tiles really fast and efficiently to use in your project so uh, you should definitely try it if you're a product designer so thanks for watching i hope you find this video helpful i'm planning to do a lot of stuff on my youtube like the breakdowns of my projects making offs uh, my general thoughts about uh, digital art if you have any suggestions for the next videos uh, feel free to share with me in the comments thanks for watching and have fun